Hopscotch is a great tool to connect to APIs and it works with the web and GraphQL. Let's make a few requests to our Superbase backend. Let's go to our API settings, grab the URL and insert it into Hopscotch. We'll need to append slash GraphQL slash V1 and then grab the API key. We'll need to send the API key as a header so we can switch to the API key tab and provide that value. Once you've inserted the secret key, click connect. Here we can explore the documentation for our GraphQL API. This is powered by introspection. Here we can see the episode's collection query and the different arguments that are required. And we can navigate into the types for that filter. We can also browse the mutations and what is available there. Let's close the sidebar and make our first GraphQL mutation. Inside of the window for query, we'll now type mutation as our operation type. Then we'll use the insert into episodes collection and pass an array of objects. We'll just pass one for now. Hopscotch is clever enough to use the introspection result here inside of the query window. We're able to see all of the fields that are required and the type. So let's finish our mutation by returning the records, ID, name, and video URL. Now, all that's left to do is click run. Here we can see that we have the result from our API. We'll now take advantage of GraphQL variables. Let's replace the string for the name and video URL and replace it with the variables name and video URL. Then we can give our mutation a name and provide to the parentheses the name and video URL, variable names. You'll need to make sure that these types match that in your API. Then if we switch to the variables tab, we can provide the variables values for name and video URL. Now, if we switch back to the query tab and click run, here we can see we have a successfully executed GraphQL mutation that has updated our Superbase database. Next, let's save this mutation for later. We'll give it a name and we'll add it to a new collection. Now, if we expand the sidebar, we can see inside of our collections folder that we have the new folder that we've just created and our new create episode request. Now, let's update our query and make a request to fetch all of our episodes. And here we can see, thanks to the introspection results from Superbase, we see all of the different arguments and fields that are required for everything in our query. So here we'll fetch the ID, name, and video URL for each of our edge nodes. Now, all that's left to do is run this and we see the results. And again, we can save this inside of our collection for future use. So hopefully this has shown you how you can get started making GraphQL requests with Hopscotch. We'll cover more in another video.